Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. I've got some real interesting stuff to share with you today. And this is encouraging. More people are eating less meat. Now they're not becoming vegetarians or vegans. They're just declining meat consumption. The phenomenon is taking place mainly in developed countries like the United States, Western Europe. In developing countries, unfortunately, there's still a fascination with meat eating and it's sort of a sign of affluence and uh, something that's revered. But in countries like ours, a little bit of decline going on, which is good. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, meat consumption in Western Europe has dropped about 9% during the last 20 years, from about 210.1 pounds a year to 191.4 pounds. So it's not huge, but it, it's a drop. Um, analysts have identified this new dietary pattern responsible for this drop as flexitarian, and they state it means meat reduction rather than somebody who's moving in the direction of vegan or vegetarianism. Germany and the Netherlands are the leaders of this movement. 75% of Dutch citizens report that they observe at least one meat-free day per week, and 40% eat meat only three days per week. So there's, you know, they're, they're starting to change things, which is great. There are several reasons for the trend, and one of them, of course, is increasing prices on animal foods while many people have been struggling economically. But another has been the events and promotional activities of groups that advocate for animal rights, vegetarian eating, and environmental protection. So researchers led by Hans de Vegas identified the trend and kind of called it flexitarian eating. And he commented in another paper on sustainability issues and meat reduction that, quote, given the enormous environmental impact of animal protein consumption and the apparent sympathy of consumers for meat reduction, it's surprising that politicians and policymakers demonstrate little, if any, interest in strategies to reduce meat consumption and to encourage more sustainable eating practices. He's surprised that politicians don't respond to market forces and what consumers want. I did have to laugh out loud. I mean, I don't think politicians respond to anything except what's interesting to them and their pocketbooks at this point. Well, anyway, not to get digress too much. De Vegas must be unaware of the cozy relationship that most governments and agricultural organizations and industries have. And in every country, I have to tell you, I've spoken in a lot of different places around the world and I try to make my talks um, really uh, related to what goes on in a particular country. All I have to do is just fill in, you know, use different logos and that sort of thing on my slides. It's the same thing in countries where government agencies regulate farming and issue dietary guidelines. They always favor the farmers, not public health. Well, all is not lost. In spite of government's efforts to at least maintain meat consumption, if not increase it, advocacy groups are obviously reaching people and convincing them to make some changes in their diet. Changes are minor, but they're encouraging. At least they're going in the right direction. So our plan is to capitalize on this phenomenon and focus on maintaining our little bit more moderate message, which doesn't include a recommendation for everybody to become vegan. We don't admonish people who don't. Um, we rather convince people to make more comprehensive changes uh, based on the spectacular results that can be achieved. And I think if we keep doing this, we can do an end run about big, around big um, uh, agricultural concerns and government partners and improve human health and animal welfare and protect the environment. So um, I think what we want to do is take the message from this that people do respond. They don't necessarily respond to information by jumping into vegetarianism and veganism and I would contend that we put a lot, push a lot of people away when we focus too much on that instead of getting them to, um, to make changes that really count that might include animal food but improve their health a whole lot at the same time. All right, so let's move on to another topic here. A diet high in fat and protein not only increases the risks of diseases like cancer and diabetes and heart disease, but also Alzheimer's disease and dementia, according to new research, and according to a whole lot of other studies that came before this one, actually. This connection in this particular study involves foods that have a high concentration of advanced glycation end products, or we'll call them AGEs for the rest of this broadcast here. AGEs, also referred to as glycotoxins, are highly oxidant compounds that have been shown to contribute to the development of chronic diseases like diabetes and coronary artery disease. They're formed as a normal byproduct of metabolism, but abnormally high levels lead to disease because they cause oxidative stress and inflammation. AGEs bind to cell receptors and cross-link with proteins in the body, which alter structure and function. One of the contributors to high AGE levels is the AGEs found in food. Now they're very concentrated in uncooked animal foods and then when you cook the animal foods their concentration becomes even greater. 
Highly processed foods are also high in AGEs, while foods like fruit, vegetables, and grains are low, even after you cook them. So I took, a, I, I looked online, I got a list of um, the AGE concentration per 100 gram serving of various foods, and I thought you'd find this real interesting. So dry oatmeal, the count is 13. Canned green beans, 18. Baked apple, 45. A Boca veggie burger, 100. And kidney beans, 116. Now frozen General Mills pancakes, 2,263. Big leap there. Potato chips from Frito-Lay, 2,883. Starbucks vanilla biscotti, 3,320. Roast beef, 7,479. Chicken breast fried, 9,722. Philadelphia cream cheese, 10,883. Olive oil extra virgin first press. Isn't that the good stuff? 11,040. Sesame oil, 21,680. And the all-time champion whipped butter at 26,480. So as you can see, there is a big difference between plant foods and animal and processed foods in terms of AGE content. Previous studies have shown that high blood levels of, and brain levels of AGEs are linked to dementia. In the study referenced above, researchers tested the effect of AGEs on both mice and people and found that mice fed a high AGE diet developed amyloid plaque and decreased cognitive function, while those fed a low AGE diet did not. The human arm of the study involved 93 people over the age of 60, and those who had high blood levels of AGEs developed cognitive decline and insulin resistance. So what this really means, what's the take home point here, is we can categorize Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline as another preventable condition, just like diabetes and coronary artery disease. A low fat plant-based diet, like the one we recommend at the Wellness Forum, can not only help you to preserve your physical health, but also your cognitive abilities too. All right, that's all for now and all for the week. Please pass this on as usual to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will speak with you again next week.